Welcome back to Insights with Experts on the Academy of Metal Roof Innovations, where we tackle some of metal roofing's need-to-know topics. Today, we're talking about mounting solar to exposed fasten roofing. Now, whether it's trapezoidal or corrugated, exposed fasten roofing profiles can be found all over the world. But when it comes to mounting ancillary such as solar panels, there are concerns about how to do so on through fastened roofs. Will adding more holes to the roof result in water leakage through to the substrate or building? How complicated will it be to plan and execute such an installation? And are there fasteners that can handle high wind loads without going through into purlins or substrate? Join us today as we get you answers to those questions and more by taking a look at an example installation done on a trapezoidal exposed fastened roof. Leading us through the process today is David Stoller, Director of Distributor Development at S5, and Field Application Specialist, Sean Haddock. Hello, welcome everybody to our training. My name is David Stoller. I'm Director of Distribution for S5, and I've been with the company for 10 years, and I've been in solar for 10 years, and I work very closely with our distributors, and we always hear that our folks want to have more training. So we hope you enjoy this, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our expert, Sean Haddock. Sean, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, I've been here for 20 years. My primary role with the company now is, is getting out in the field and, and working with contractors and others, um, training on best uses of our products that I've learned throughout the years and, and also learning more so that I can help others with the things I learn. Enough about me, let's get over to the job site and have a look. So the project we're looking at today is DK Woodworks out of Bishop, California. Um, this was a fun one, an exposed fastened metal roof. We uh, actually ran into a blizzard pretty much going in coming from this project um, it's at the base of the sierras where it's uh, pretty windy and can experience some pretty extreme weather 165 pv panels on their roof and uh, we used the rib bracket as sean was saying we use the rib bracket which comes in four different sizes one, two, three, and four, and you see those on the screen here. The fasteners you see on the table are included, and Sean will be talking more about the fasteners. And you can kind of also see the black EPDM underneath it, which gives it a waterproofing quality, and the legs are flexible, so there is some flexibility when you put that onto the rib. And there you can see a better view of the EPDM itself. We do have sizing charts on our website to help you determine the best rib bracket to use. There is a slotted hole on top, and as you'll see, that slotted hole gives you some adjustability with the PV panel. Then there is a slot from, for the M8 flange nut, and that M8 flange nut is what you will attach the PV kit to, or if you're not using a PV kit, you're attaching an ancillary, you would attach the ancillary to the M8 nut. The tools that are required are pretty standard. Almost everybody is gonna have these on the, on the truck. Um, you just want to make sure your uh, impact driver or uh, gun is fully charged. And we're going to throw it back to the uh, DK Woodworks project, and we'll toss it back over to Sean. So on this project, we got to meet and hang out with the guys from Burger Solar. Um, they used a, a dual optimizer on this project. And here we are on the ground getting things pre-laid out, uh, figuring out where those optimizers need to be, what lengths the leads need to be, where we need our clips, and, and just tidying it up things on the modules so that when we get up on the roof, it just clips right into place for us. Sean, how important is it to do some of this stuff on the ground opposed to um, doing it up on the roof? You know, initially, you kind of, and what you're not seeing here is we did go up on the roof to, to make sure that we had the right layout. And then from that point on, it's a huge time saver to do this stuff either on a flat roof or, or on the ground before they go up into place. You mark your modules and what order they're in, got them on your map so that you know where your optimizers are and which modules are which. Um, it's a really clean way to do it and keeps everything in order. So here we're getting bottom row laid out. We're going to start with a, a right triangle to make sure that we're running square with with the roof and and sometimes you're not totally square with the roof you got to tweak it a little bit but you want to get the the best layout so that it's all going to look right from the ground um, this one is a pretty high profile you can see it from the ground so it's very important that we we kept it as straight and true as we could 
you can see it there we laid out a string line and we're marking each rib where we're going to put a bracket the reason for that is it can get confusing when you're up there laying that first row of brackets with no modules in place you want to be sure you're you're counting your ribs and putting the brackets on the right ones because as you can see they're piercing fasteners and so once that bracket's in place you don't want to have to pull it back out and move it Something else I want to point out here is you can see these brackets are all pre-assembled with the PV kit. That is another thing you can do on the ground, and I recommend doing so. Um, speeds up time on the job. You don't have to be fumbling with parts while you're up on the roof, dropping bolts down in the gutter, things like that. Sean, how tight do they have to get those when they're pre-assembling? They don't have to get those tight. You just want them basically finger tight so that you can, you can move it when you're up there on the roof and get it lined up. Um, that slot, like like we pointed out before, is for adjustability. So if your bracket's a little bit off or um, if you want to go to one end of the bracket on the bottom row, you can. Um, when you tighten that, when you tighten down your top grab, it will actually tighten that stud into the part itself, into the rib bracket. Sean, what, one other thing I wanted to ask you was I noticed that they had a black Sharpie. And I know this topic comes up a lot when marking lines on the roof. Is there a reason you shouldn't use or that you should use a Sharpie and shouldn't use a pencil on a metal roof? There is, especially on a Galvalum roof. Um, the, the graphite in a pencil uh, will leave a permanent mark on a Galvalum roof, um, and that mark will be in red rust. The, uh, the other thing about it is you can see we also snapped a line um, that can be problematic as well if you snap a line on a metal roof you want to be sure and wipe that down as soon as possible because as soon as it rains you won't get that line off the roof so here we're we're attaching the bracket you can see he's putting down pressure on the bracket itself to to seat it in place while he's putting the screws in uh, these screws are self-piercing screws they go in fairly easy but you do need to put some pretty good torque on them to get them started um, the reason behind that is that self-piercing screw, instead of drilling material, pushes the material through, which gives you more uh, thread engagement in that hole by pushing that metal through as opposed to cutting it out. Creates almost like a pocket, correct, Sean? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's almost a dimple where you're pushing the, the material through and then it's basically tapping it. So gives you more holding strength. Sean, what type of prep needs to be done for the roof in terms of putting the rib bracket down? Do you need do you need alcohol? You need to clean it, or is wiping it free of debris sufficient? You know, if the roof is is pretty clean, uh, a lot of times you don't even have to wipe any debris. But if there's debris up there, we recommend you want to wipe it off. It's a it's a rubber base in that part, and you've got your your screw with a rubber washer. They're the same materials. Um, It'll give you a good seal. You just want to make sure there's no heavy debris or grease or anything on the roof. So here we're going to go ahead and lay the modules in place. They're going to start in one corner and then work our way across the eave, setting our, our base row. Um, this is the most important row because you want to keep everything perfectly straight. Um, as a lot of you installers know, you, you get out an eighth of an inch on your base row and it can mean three inches at the top um, very critical in this process he's going to measure it out tweak it a little bit once you get things set in place then you'll go ahead and tighten your bottom grab but leave the upper grab the mid grab loose for your next module while they're doing so they're going to clip up their wires you can see here this is what i was talking about before we're actually determining where those clips and and things need to go um, so that when we get on the next panels in the next row, uh, they'll all have all been pre-laid out on the ground for us. This lower row can take the longest, and, and I've seen a lot of guys in the field, they get frustrated, think it's going to take forever to do the job because when you're doing this bottom row, it, it takes so long. But trust me, once this one's in place, it goes in slick and easy. Here they're using a jig for their spacing between the modules. Um, running left to right or across the row. Uh, just keeps a nice even gap all the way so that you don't actually bump one or, or when you're tightening it down, it move a little bit. Uh, pretty good 
pretty good practice for for keeping that gap that you want there. Uh, a, another little trick you can use, which was not implemented on this project, but the the mid grab itself can be you can use two of them in between the modules there as you're as you're laying them down, and that will also help you maintain that gap instead of having to use the wood block. Sean, is that uh, jig? Is that something that you can buy from S5, or is that something they just fabricate themselves? No, that's something you just fabricate yourself on the job, um, depending on what you want that gap. The reason they didn't use our mid grabs, like I was saying, is they wanted a little smaller gap than one inch. Um, I think they're using half or three quarter. In this clip, you're seeing the final squaring of that bottom row before we tighten everything down. We're running a string line across the lines on the module and eyeballing things to make sure that they're all lined up nice and straight. Um, you can see that module's out just a little bit, so we're going to tweak them until we get it perfectly straight and then tighten down that bottom grab. And here we're tightening it all down. So here you can see those brackets at the top of the panel, they're just loosely laid in there. There's no screws in those brackets. The reason for that is we're 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 getting them dead straight, but we want them also sitting at the, at the elevation above the roof they're supposed to so that we can get them nice and straight. Uh, once we get this bottom row tightened, then we'll go ahead and come through and put the screws into the bracket where it needs to be. Um, this all goes along with, with some of the design in this PV kit in that it can be used as the jig itself running up to columns. Another thing to point out about the PV kit is as you're going up in in columns here, uh, the PV kit is is UL listed for bonding from module to module. So there's no need for lugs or wires or anything like that going up the column. So Sean, I wanted to ask you a question. You said about, hey, how important it is to really <laughs> measure twice and cut once, but we all know on the job site, sometimes things happen. If the guys miss and screw into the wrong place um, and have to move it, or if they strip a fastener, what is the best way to fill that hole? How do they go about doing that? Well, the best way to fill that hole is, is actually with a rivet tool. Um, they have rivets available that are have rubber washers in them. Uh, it's not your typical um, pop rivet tool. It's it's a different rivet tool, and you basically drill the hole out, put the rivet in, and it seals the hole up. Now, one thing about that is, oftentimes that rivet is going to be right underneath where you needed the bracket. So the beauty about this roof type is is you have ribs running, probably five or six of them per module. So you may have to move your bracket over one rib for that for that group of two modules but um, shouldn't be an issue if it happens every now and then really it doesn't happen a whole lot you know as your installers are going they they get a feel for, for that screw and when it's coming tight um, along with that if you're watching the watcher when you tighten down that screw you know when it's starting to squeeze and that's where you stop and, and you almost never strip one if you're doing so so with the rivets uh, if you are in need of those, you can reach out to your S5 distributor and you can always feel free to reach out to S5 as well. Sean, another thing I wanted to ask you about, and it ties into holes and rivets and the EPDM that you were talking about, you know, S5, uh, as you mentioned, uses EPDM on the washer as well as the EPDM on the rib bracket. But sometimes we'll see contractors putting extra goop down. Is that a good thing, a recommended thing to do, or is that something they should steer clear of? That is something that they should really steer clear of. I mean, we we go to these lengths to make sure that we have a, a watertight seal, uh, and by putting goop up there and stuff, it, number one, you're you're making the roof look ugly, uh, as well as they can actually over time start to break loose those sealants and, and cause more damage than than if there was nothing there. Um, so I would definitely not recommend putting any other sealants with our products. Yeah, and a lot of those sealants that they use, they are they don't do well in the sun. And so they're exposed to the sun and then they just dry out and flake off over time. Absolutely. They can look really ugly after about three to five years. Another thing about sealants is, is you can actually inadvertently get it 
to where you trap moisture underneath that part. And if you're in a climate where it's subject to freezing, um, then you're you're putting a small block of ice under there, which can actually strip out threads and and make that connection to where you do have a leak. So definitely avoid any other any other goops or sealants. Something else I want to point out here when they're tightening down that rib bracket, we're using an extension on the tool. And the reason for that is the rib bracket, when you're when you're putting those fasteners in, can be uh, uh, a little tough to get to that hole behind the module there. So the use of an extension on the end of your tool makes that much easier. You want to be sure and get that screw nice and straight when you put it in, otherwise you can cause a leak. You want that washer to be seated against the part all the way around it. Now you can see we're going up the roof. We're, we're going to go up one column. Uh, again, this has to do with staying square. So we get that first column all the way up and we're leaving them loose along um, all of the mid grabs so that we can tweak those panels left or right. What we're going to do is when we get to the ridge, we're going to go ahead and pull our, our cross measurements again to make sure that we're square. Then from there, you can just start laying in all the modules in between uh, using your jigs and, and also using our parts as a jig going up the roof. At this point is where it really starts to rock and roll. The use of dual optimizers, I will say here, can be a little confusing and tricky. Um, if you're using dual optimizers, you really want to know and make sure that you're keeping on top of your layout. It can it can cause some frustrations, but uh, once you get it figured out, it really goes pretty slick. So from here, you can see it's we're quickly traveling up this roof, getting a lot of modules laid in place. It's basically rinse and repeat. The process is straightforward once you've got everything squared up. The only other thing that we haven't mentioned here is your column to column on these modules. You want to be sure and and bond from column to column at the end or, or even as you're going. But um, there's different products available out there, some that clip on, others use copper wire and lugs. But we've got our home runs all laid out towards the top. You can see we've got boxes up there at the top, keeping everything nice and neat up there at the ridge. Very clean, nice looking array. Sean, thank you so much. So now that we've seen how easily uh, and effectively a rib bracket and PV kit can be used to install solar. Uh, there are always other things that come up on the job that should be addressed, kind of best practices, lessons learned. As Sean mentioned, it's really, really important to do as much um, of the design and layout up front and also to do as much of the wire management up front. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But one thing I want to mention is when it comes to module level electronics, there are many different ways to attach those either directly to the module itself or you could attach it to the bracket, the rib bracket in this case. There's also many different um, brackets on the market that allow you to attach the bracket to the module and then whatever electronic you need to attach to it. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is when you're going from column to column, you need to bond those together and S5 does offer a bonding jumper. There's also a lot of those on the market. Most solar distributors have uh, a multitude of those products available. You just have to know to ask for them. Makes it much easier to do that. Um, wire management clips are another thing um, that S5 carries is just a convenience, but you can also find those readily available at most solar distributors as well. Feel free to, uh, to take a look at what we do have on our website. Something else I want to point out about the rib bracket is, is it's built up and gives you a gap there. And that gap is, you're able to use that gap for wire management. Um, it's a great place to run your wires up the roof, keep them all neat and organized. And it also keeps those modules up off the roof a little bit more so you've got better airflow. Um, in doing this process, I recommend one that you, you get your jumpers as close to the edge of the module as you can so that you can just clip them into the next one as you're going up the roof. This isn't always possible, so it helps to, to lay that module in at an angle, clip up your wires while it's at an angle so that you can reach under there and then lay it down into place. These are all things that you learn as you go. Um, some things are going to work better for others. And uh, the, the big thing here was keeping all of those wires nice and tight and up off of the roof. 
Um, and you can see here we're in, we're doing everything we can to ensure that that stays that way by using all the different clips and zip ties underneath the module where they're not exposed to UV, etc. Sean, on the zip ties, the S5 PV kit has a slot, little slots around the desk. Um, were those utilized on this specific job? And uh, how would you use those? I don't believe they were used on this project. Uh, that being said, they are there and in a great place to run zip ties so that you can tie those wires up and keep them tight and neat and up off the roof. So a couple of other tips just to remember, if you do lose any of the S5 self-piercing fasteners, please reach out to S5 or to your S5 distributor and use the recommended self-piercing fasteners that we sell. Do not go down to the hardware store and buy something else. I uh, also want to mention that the PV kit is now available in black. Um, so uh, please reach out to us or your S5 distributor to get more information on that. So that's going to do it for the install. That pretty much sums everything up. Really, I think the PV kit is has improved over the years and we're driving towards a, a very user-friendly product. And we believe that we've pretty much gotten there, but let's let's hear from the installers and see what they have to think. Hi there, my name is Scott Berger. I'm the owner of Berger Solar Electric in Bishop, California. We've been a, a customer of S5 using their, their awesome products for a couple years now. And so we're kind of keeping up on the new offerings. And I saw that uh, the PV kit and uh, we had this job coming up. I thought it would be a perfect match for this job. Just makes all the sense in the world. Like why would you load rail onto a truck, load it onto a roof, install it, and then put your, your feet on to match your modules when the roof already has built in rails. It's just, it makes so much sense. It's, it's just, I can't imagine anybody doing it a different way and still using rails. It just doesn't make any sense anymore. We don't have these huge boxes of rails that we gotta carry up to the roofs. Uh, we can fill up a basket and bring it up, strap it off and pull from it. We don't have all this extra material that we're lugging around. I would recommend pretty much any S5 product. The S5 PV kit is fast for this application and it's very simple and few parts. And that's what we're looking for. Well, there you have it. Matching the popularity of exposed fastened metal roofing with the usefulness of a solar array can really be a win-win. You can easily reap the benefits of solar power without having to go through a complicated and expensive installation. Despite having to add more fasteners to the roof to attach the system, you can do so without having to worry about water migration since the EPDM sealants on the screws and brackets provide a double weather seal. And you can rest assured that those brackets aren't going anywhere since they create a sleeve in the parent material which maximizes stripping torque, shear, and withdrawal strength. If you'd like to find out more about the products that were showcased today, check out the product section of our website to find everything from brackets to clamps to systems and much more. And don't forget to visit our training center for more opportunities to further your education in the metal roofing industry. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time.